Thank you for watching the Alexander Arguez YouTube channel. Please enjoy the video. Um, alrighty, I guess we could go to the discipline section. Okay. Sound good to you? Mm-hmm. Get some more water. Yeah, so I guess with with this section, uh, we're basically trying to convert uh slobs to champions, you know? <laughs> I, I I would consider myself still in the slob category. Uh I'm an aspiring champion now. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah, uh yeah, I mean with with getting to five hours a day of language learning, that personally to me right now is daunting, you know. Mm -hmm. and to a lot of the listeners, very daunting, you know. Uh well, yeah. it is it is daunting, you know. But then these are people who are coming around with a list of nine or ten languages that they say they want to know, and that's what it takes to do. You can't wave a magic wand and have nine or ten languages if you don't put in, you know, five hours a day, you know, consistently uh, working with that. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, I guess I'm not, uh, and I know you didn't take it this way, but I'm not trying to say what's the magic pill, what's the shortcut, but there. I mean, I think for me, part of the most inspiring thing about this, as saying it's like a really fulfilling hobby for me, it's like the self transformation aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm, I'm this rubbish. Can I become something sculpted? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, what how, what is your strategy, I guess, for going about that that self transformation process? A oh, great question. Yeah, I mean, I do actually. I mean, that's why I have my manuscript that I've been working on forever, and now I've got a class here called Path the Polyglot. I see. You know, pursuing this as sort of, um, yeah. In my case, I was able to turn it into my 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 bread and butter. You know, there are ways if you're kind of a, a professor or a teacher. Or, I don't know, there there are different kinds of language work that one can do, so it makes it possible to, so that you know when you're working with studying that you're actually being paid to study. Um, so if you can get that kind of scholarly position, that's uh, that's that's one way to do it. Um, but um, yeah, that's what it takes. And you can look at that as a, a path, as a, a discipline, as a, something you need to, to build up and work towards. And it's just like any discipline. You just need to start somewhere and be consistent with it and keep giving yourself reasons to be consistent with it and transform yourself, like you said. I mean, just to, to see the project in multiple dimensions. So I mean, the old advice I gave you thus far, I'm not talking about, okay, just, you know, learn, you know, get to get to this this level and 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 learn and go and speak and travel. And that's that's nice if you can do these things, but that's a separate set of goals. Um, and that would require a totally different approach to to you know going out and, and learning languages. But um if we're talking about um wanting to uh work towards something uh in, in this uh in this scholarly fashion as a, as a passionate hobby um and you called yourself uh what you tell uh, uh you said it i didn't I don't want to say what did you call yourself i earlier i just called myself a slob you know <laughs> so slob. you want to transform yourself from from a slob to somebody who has discipline that's i mean that's just something you just have to start small and work up to it atomic habits just doesn't matter what you do but if you're teeny tiny steps to get started and just be consistent about them and they do build up and particularly with something like language learning, it becomes more fulfilling because you're able to read and do stuff with it. So it becomes, it actually becomes easier, I think. Um, uh, but initially, yes, I can, I guess I can vaguely recall, you know, you want to do something and then you're full of energy and you get a lot done. And then the next day you, um, you just can't get around to it. It just doesn't happen, you know, however, however much you, you want. Uh, and so getting in a consistent habit. But um, yeah, so if you can start out, again, you, you need to put in something. That's why I said, if you can start out with, you know, 15 minutes a day on, you know, and then ultimately work up to five hours is better than saying, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to put in five hours right now. And you'll, you'll never succeed in that in that fashion. So definitely taking teeny tiny steps at first progressing to baby steps and then yeah longer and longer and bigger and bigger steps is 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 the way to go but at what does that mean in practice it means that you have to see the entire project on multiple levels you have to see it as sort of you know okay this is challenging myself you know uh, 
why do I want to do this? It's not most people, you know, that are, are, are out there trying to learn nine or 10 languages. Why am I trying to do this? What am I trying to turn myself into? What am I trying to learn or understand or see? Uh, and I think, you know, if you're interested in theology and philosophy and things like that, if you see the whole thing as sort of um, a project to understand how your mind works, a project to see, you know, you I think you've gone beyond now just always thinking English because you can think a little bit in Latin right now. Isn't that liberating? Isn't that like totally different, you know, from from thinking I was put into this language and this is this. I always thought thought and words were synonymous. And now, you know, they're not. Now, you know, OK, this can be in English and this can be in Latin. It can be either. I can expect and the more languages, you know, the sort of bigger perspective you'll have on. I always like to think of it as language with a capital L is what just the way we're wired to operate and english french latin these are languages with a little l and these are manifestations or reflections of language with a capital l and it's a two-way street the more languages you know the more perspectives you have on capital l which is the way our minds work the way we're structured to think this fact that we have this facility with um making the air move with our lips and tongues in various waves and our ears perceive it and it makes different sounds and we can write those sounds down into shapes and transmit meaning with that. I mean, that's an amazing ability that, you know, if, we, if you think about that, how are we structured to do that? How can we, uh, what does that tell us about our minds? If you think of understanding language of the capital L better and better as 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 sort of a goal or an effect of a side effect of, of doing this, that's another um, motivation, I think, sort of. Think of expanding your mind, expanding your horizons, and in that really true literal sense of the word. Um, and yeah, again, just just seeing the the more um, you can understand how languages are related to each other, I think the more fascinating they become, and the more transparent the other literature becomes, and the more languages are related, the more cultures are related, and it just becomes a sort of all engrossing project that, um, honestly. Um, yes, I, I, when I was in graduate school, I mean, I, I had the discipline to do the work that I needed to do to get through graduate school, but it meant I had to sort of put my poly language learning desires kind of on hold. And so I was always planning for it and think, why can't I do a little bit of it? And, you know, just sort of like making these big plans and schedules and, and getting started and then just not stopping. And it, there's just a stage of life that it was, it was right to do that for, um, and so, but yes, I remember, um, you know, at that stage, yes, it would be very difficult to, to, to get consistently 15 minutes a day on, you know, as, as, as a something, I'm going to do this every day. That just becomes me. That becomes who I am. Um, but that's what it takes. And if you can do that, then you can build upon that. So sort of psychological, philosophical motivation is, uh, you know, the, the more meaning you can give to the project beyond, you know, beyond learning a specific language, I think the more value you 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 find in putting your time and energy into this. Um, but um, also, uh, I think that it's important to... <clears throat> Let's get me done. <laughs> You're good. Um, what was I saying? So uh, if you think of it as a form of... Uh, you're, you're building up the discipline to go one to the better, but really draw some parallels to um sort of getting better with do you play a musical instrument no that's that's something i really want to do, right. do and you, to me, i, I yeah. see that as part of poly literacy like, yeah that can be a that can be in the language music is a language we'll add that in okay um so yeah you want to gonna spend time for music now but you yeah, do you do you run? Do you play sport? Do you do any kind of exercise that like you're getting better at? You know, this uh, you know, do you lift weights and you're you know you're getting stronger and you add on you know more weights or something? The same way you make systematic progress by you know by by deliberate practice and physical exercise, uh, and at exercise in something like music, and also at exercise in something like meditation, you know, the longer you can try to concentrate or the, uh, the pranayama, the deeper breaths you can take, uh, any kind of practice, the, the the more you do it, the better you get at it. And if you link it that way, say, well, these are physical practices. Uh, and um, then there's spiritual practices, different types of prayer. And this is a mental practice. If you, so if you view this as sort of that sort of discipline in itself, it takes on its own life. And 
Yes, I don't know what to say. I mean, even even in your most slobby days, don't please tell me you still brush your teeth. I mean, at a certain point, something becomes so ingrained as as a habit, you just don't you don't think about it, and um, that's kind of what happens uh, when you get better and better and spend more and more. Um, so yes, I can recall, uh, you know, in 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 my late twenties, even uh, that it was there were days when I would yes have a hard time getting anything done. Um, but honestly, I just, that I, to me now, five hours a day is kind of like, that's the lowest I would do. It's like your new standard. Yeah. That would be, that would be, the, that would be the least I could do. Mm -hmm. It would be, I would feel like I was really slacking off. I would feel like I was just not doing anything. I would feel bored. I would feel like, you know, I could only do that. You know, if I'm driving, you know, or, you know, all day or, you know, traveling all day or something like that. But, you know, if I'm if I'm in my home living my life uh, that, you know, that would be like if I if I don't do five hours a day, what was I doing? I, I can't. That's unfathomable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like what you said right there. <laughs> I do feel like for me, uh, the more I uh, can romanticize something, mm -hmm. the way easier it becomes, you know, mm -hmm. and also just uh, thinking about your your metaphor to like how it's like weightlifting, like. That's often how I think about it. And I need to think about it more often in the sense of like, for me, weightlifting now is it's it's so much fun that it's like, mm -hmm. I would be sad if I didn't get to do it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. And I guess just for me, like my relationship to my body is a lot more innate than, uh you know, language learning. Uh, but so it's like, for me, I think it's just in time, if I can come around to see, and I do already, like, I'm, I'm not saying it's like, mm -hmm. unpredictable to me, but it's like, for me already with Latin, it's like, I'm like this is fun like why why wouldn't i want to be doing this right now yeah. it's fun you know when you get to the point when it's fun it's 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 not a challenge it's it's you know it's like i said it would be a, a day a, uh, how could i possibly spend a day uh, at home you know with without reading i just no it just doesn't happen mm -hmm. um so you know um it'll it'll get that way maybe yeah and i think a lot of this too is just for me especially is like recognizing like what what the what will actually fulfill your desires you mm -hmm. know and like having a, a taste a palate that desires the right thing you know because mm -hmm. youtube can seem so fulfilling sometimes but it's really like the second you pick up a book it's like whoa this that pales in comparison you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know if you have anything to say about that but like i just feel like that's really important you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I don't know about that, but I was thinking about that. I had another thread of thought from what we were just discussing. Um, about, yeah, about the sort of metaphors or analogies to physical exercise. I do think that if you can say, well, yes, I, I mean, we all know what physical exercise, right? And we all know what, uh, if you really think of this, this sort of, this kind of self-directed learning project, that's mental exercise. It's, Urging into spiritual exercise, and again, if you use your Latin and Greek uh, uh, and Hebrew and Sanskrit, these are all sacred languages. Russian is, you know, in the in the Orthodox Church. I mean, if you're reading theological texts uh, in in these kind of things, you can say your prayers in Latin. You can, you know, you can combine a spiritual practice part of it too. So if you have, you know, just a holistic approach to the entire project, that you know, that just gives it more motivation from different corners and more likelihood that you're going to persist with it and that it will just become this um this natural ingrained habit that uh, it would be hard for you not to do mm -hmm. and i guess my final question for this like discipline section is like and this could just be a me problem but i, I don't feel like it would be is like the hardest thing for me is simply like i guess like i just want to be with family and friends all day you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like how how do you make time for yourself in that regard you know oh well then that, this is sad this is gonna be miserable to, to, to tell you the truth i'm lonely i don't have i wish i had more friends and family but my boys have you know they're in college now and and uh it's nice living in the woods but i don't have a lot of neighbors and you know i haven't lived here that long that i know a lot of people here and even my wife um she works so much and studies so much there are days when i barely see her so uh if it weren't for Merlin, gotta get Merlin in here all the time. 
if it weren't for Merlin and Sophie, I would be, I would just feel like there's days when I wouldn't see people. So, um, yeah, this is a, this is a way of making productive time of of uh, of loneliness. But it's it's nice if you can um, have uh, you know have 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 a way to use the language with people. So uh, if on the off chance that your friends and family are interested in languages, then you can do that with them. But our families rarely are, right? Uh, <laughs> and most of, the, most of the friends that you have. So hopefully um, that that's one of the best things I can't deny about the the whole internet age and all that, this, this bringing together of people with communal interests like polyglottery, who, you know, you would be all alone. I was all alone. It was like, you know, back in the, you know, before the internet, you didn't know anybody. And then uh, Richard Simcott in particular started really taking direction of guidance of the polyglot community. And he's got these wonderful polyglot conferences and, you know, it's just so easy to find other people who are interested in it. So um, maybe you can make friends that you can you can do some languages with. But no, uh, uh, undeniably, yes, spending time with family and friends, you know, and if you're you, you there are some sports that you can maybe listen while you're running, you know, but there's a lot of sports you're going to be doing thing. Uh, do you want to be concentrating on playing a musical instrument or, or doing there's so many other things that are going to make it hard to get to that target of of again five hours or whatever you're in but again it's just just the way life is you the if you if you, if you try to force it or sort of plan for it to try to envision something it's hard to imagine what it's like but you if you just sort of persist in a certain direction you develop more and more habits in that and again it will just become something you know there's just there's just ways that you live your life people get you know it's it's amazing some what you know some people do this on a given day some people do that in a given day and uh it's just a sort of uh really the power of habit can't be over under, underestimated overestimated the power of habit is just um whatever you can get into a habit of doing just becomes so natural that it doesn't become difficult anymore um i would say my father's a better example. I have to call him. It's his birthday. Um, he's 85 today. He's 85. He's a much better example of a balanced life than mine because he's got so many friends and so many acquaintances and he does, writes poetry and he does other things and he gets out and about and, you know, and, and, and uh, he does things. But he, I would say he too. I, if there's ever a day when he does not read for five hours a, a day, I would be flabbergasted. I mean, and and he's got a much more, you know, robust social life than I do. So it's just a question of the way you you live your life. I've always been sort of um, reclusive anyway. I've got a couple of really good friends, but I've never been like a great big socializer. So it's, it's not a, a terrible sacrifice to me. Um, but if you're the kind of person that, you know, you, you, like you said, if, if spending a lot of time doing other things is a challenge, that's something you just have to, again, evolve towards just sort of set your intentions. I want to see, you know, what's most important to me. And if I take little steps in this way, I'm not trying to force anything, but, you know, just find, you know, you might be find three hours a day, four hours a day is, is what you can give. And then we'll just sort of put the whole project of, of the number of languages. We'll just make it longer term, or maybe cut something out or look at that because you might not be able, but going from 15 minutes a day to three hours is probably not that much less daunting than 15 hours, 15 minutes to, to five hours, right? So again, it's still the same principle of building up.